Welcome back. 20 minutes now past the hour. There are just 51 days left until we would go over the so-called fiscal cliff. That is the $7 trillion in automatic spending cuts and tax increases that could go into effect in January. So as Washington contemplates its own fiscal responsibility, one group is hoping to make it work on a more personal level right at home. Operation Hope says its mission is to promote financial dignity in underserved communities. And joining me now is John Hope Bryant. He's the group's founder and serves on the President's Advisory Council on Financial Capability and former U.N. Ambassador Andrew Young, a global spokesperson for Operation Hope. So you are welcome to both of you. You're having you. a, a summit here uh, in Atlanta yes. uh, this week. Um, tell me first, John, about the group's mission and about the summit a little bit. Well, our mission is, I said very humbly, uh, trying to continue some work that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was doing when he unfortunately passed on to a better place. Uh, in 68, he was focused on the Poor People's Campaign. Uh, and his last book was, uh, Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos or Our Community. And I think these are the same questions we're trying to answer right now. Uh, our mission is civil rights, not civil rights, but civil rights to make free enterprise and capitalism finally relevant to the poor and to finally work for the poor. And I, I would argue today, even if you're middle class today, you feel poor. If you're living in a major city, you're making less than forty, fifty, seventy thousand dollars a year, you're struggling to make ends meet. Living in a small town, making less than twenty five, thirty thousand dollars a year, you're struggling to make ends meet. So folks uh, living from paycheck to paycheck before the economic crisis. Mm -hmm. And um, whether you're white, black, red, brown, or yellow, you want to see some more green. So we think that financial dignity and financial literacy is a new civil rights issue. Uh, if you don't understand the language of money and you don't right. have a bank account, you're an economic slave. Absolutely. Uh, Ambassador, what made you get involved in the project? Well, Dr. King's mission was to redeem the soul of America from the triple evils of racism, war, and poverty. Well, when we got to poverty, that's more than a government proposition. Mm -hmm. And we found that, uh, well, I found as mayor, that we had to f involve everybody in the free enterprise system. And that there was more money available in the free enterprise system uh, if we learn the language of money, as John says, and, and how the system works. And so how exactly, um, I mean, what do you offer in terms of, uh, I, I, from what I read from your website, there's literacy programs, there's help with credit, there's all kinds of things, right, for both, for both the younger generations and adults. Yeah, but let's make this real for people. When, I mean, Atlanta is, the, is an inter, the only international city in the South, arguably, because this man brought $70 billion worth of investments from the world here. We have moved credit scores uh, 120, 140 points for individuals like the guy who made the suit that I'm wearing today. We literally took his dream of being a clothier and uh, made it a reality of having a clothing business uh, with a $35,000 loan, yes, but mostly capital in his head and in his heart by giving him financial literacy, by raising his credit scores and moving it from 550 credit score to 670. You do that and you change somebody's mm -hmm. life. 550 credit score is a check cashing customer. It's a, pred it's a predatory lending customer. It's a title lending customer. Uh, those, those predatory lenders are not racist. They're target marketing. But if you can move somebody to a, five, to, for a, seven, a 670 credit score or a 700 credit score, that's mainstream right. banking. So, I mean, it, obviously, you've, you've seen the need. The need is great. Why has it taken so long? Why has it taken a group like this? Well, it, it's taken a long time because for a long time we thought the government was doing it all. When I became mayor in 1980, though, I realized that I couldn't go to Washington for money. I had to go to the private markets. But nobody taught me that in school. And uh, nobody's teaching most of the mayors that. And they, they sit around figuring out, uh, not knowing how to access capital. There is an excess of capital in today's world. And we're running deficits with the budget. And there's $21 trillion in tax havens. When I became mayor, there was about half a trillion dollars that I knew about in oil money. And I went to those capitals and invited them to come to Atlanta and invest and made it easy for them to invest. We made it efficient, we made it honest, and uh, yeah. we, we made it virtually tax-free to get started. Uh, on your website, you say yeah. that, that you've helped so many families, helped so many people that you're, you're actually putting yourself out of business. Well, that's, uh, goal. that's the goal, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I sometimes feel, though, that we're, we're failing because as we help more people, more people fall into to, to a trap of, uh, of needing help. I mean, we talk about this fiscal cliff. Most of my clients are, I mean, and I'm, I'm, I'm confident President Obama and Congress will resolve this 
uh, before the, the, the deadline. But most of my families are on a fiscal cliff every month. I mean, they've got too much month at the end of their money. And that's most American families. Right. Uh, what we have got to do is to not cut, 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 but grow, grow, grow. There is too much opportunity sitting on the sidelines in America. These are not poor neighborhoods we see. They're emerging markets. And if we can move them from where they are to, to as I say, increase their credit score, increase their, increase their financial literacy, make them low economic engines and job creators, because most jobs come from startups, you grow GDP. You grow tax bases. Mm -hmm. The mayors have more money to, in their coffers to, to then spend, hopefully responsibly. We've got to look at growing an economy, figure out what we're for, versus cutting an economy uh, because we don't because we've lost our storyline and it's, it's true we, yeah. we, t we talk so much about the fiscal cliff and, and focusing on Washington but it's a, it's very true so many families have their own uh, we John Brian the best crisis yes yes I mean we are going through so much technological change more technological change in the last 10 years than the world went through in the last century it's very true so it's going to take us a while to adjust to all of it we'll get there we will. We'll get there one way or the other. And Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke is coming with us this week yes. to, to, at our global summit to amplify the importance of financial dignity. And Ambassador Young is co-chairing that summit. Thank you both, John Bryant and Ambassador Young. Appreciate Very it. Good. Very important discussion. Uh, as we mentioned, Operation Hope is hosting this summit, and uh, the chairman, Ben Bernanke, will be the keynote speaker there. Uh, for more on Operation Hope, you can check out their website, operationhope.org. Well, believe it or not.